And more on immigration today as we hurtle towards an intake of 650,000 new migrants this year and next. Today, a new think tank, the E61 Institute, that lists the Federal Government Department and the ABS's data partners, and has the ANU's Professor Warwick McGibbon as a senior academic fellow, so I rate it as very credible. Well, they've released a startling report contradicting the received wisdom about our immigration program. Now, according to officialdom, this is the line you get in Canberra, we bring in migrants based on their high-level skills and that they boost the economy. Not so, says this new Institute's report, titled Misallocated Migrants. The report completely contradicts the line from Big Business and Treasury that migration at ever higher levels is needed for our continued prosperity. The report says that migrant workers in Australia are more likely to work in lower productivity industries than non-migrant workers. Within industries, the report says, migrant workers are more likely to work at lower productivity firms. And the report says these patterns have become more prevalent over the course of the 2010s. In other words, the report confirms what I've been saying to you here for two years, because that's the reality that the pandemic made more obvious, that migrants are filling the jobs Australians won't do. Cleaning, waiting, driving, caring, labouring in agriculture. The report confirms everyone's real life observations that in hospitality over the past decade, the percentage of migrant workers has increased from around 20% to just under 40. In agriculture, from around 15% to now well over 20. Now you get around your own community, you know this is true. This new think tank report is upfront about Australia's economic growth model being dependent on migration-driven population growth. And it draws the critical distinction between growth in terms of overall GDP and the much more important measure of growth in GDP per person. It says this population increase drove a wedge between growth in GDP and GDP per capita, concealing, I'll say that again, concealing, the report says, a pronounced slowdown in productivity growth. In other words, the nature of our migration program is reducing, not increasing, the productivity growth upon which all prosperity ultimately depends. The report's conclusion is that, and I quote again, migration has played some role in Australia's productivity slowdown because the relative quality of migrant workers coming to Australia has decreased. Again, exactly what people like me and my guest last night, Abel Rizvi, former DEPSEC of the Department of Immigration, have been saying for some time. Also today, there's the Mayor of Fairfield, Frank Carboni, saying that Western Sydney is shut and he's begging the government not to, quote, dump 650,000 new residents just so they can fix their bottom line. We can't have 900,000 people coming in over two years when we can't even build enough housing to accommodate that many people. We don't want the price of housing skyrocketing. We don't want rents to go up even higher. Uh, I mean, the government said that they couldn't assist people over the last six months because by assisting them, it would cause inflation. Well, all this is going to do is cause um, people's pay packets to go down. But with no population plan and both sides hoping you don't notice these new migrant numbers, is anyone in Canberra actually listening to voters who are left to live with the consequences of this big Australia push? 